Hi, second graders at Holly Grove. My name is Katherine Brown. I am a news anchor at WRAL, and Miss um, Bierke asked me to talk to you a little about being a community helper and about some of the things that we as journalists do to help our community. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that. Um, some of you may know my son, Maxwell Kirkin. He's in fourth grade. He had Miss Bierke for second grade, and we just love Miss Bierke. You are very, very, very lucky to have Miss Bierke as your teacher this year. Um, he had a great year. I know you guys are going to have an awesome year too. So uh, Maxwell is behind the camera right now. He is. You want to? You want to wave, Max? <laughs> he um, during this whole coronavirus thing has kind of been my right hand man. So he's been helping me a lot with camera work and some of the other stuff that I have to do because um, I have been working from home, which is a very odd thing to do as a journalist. Um, so I just wanted to explain a little about my job and then answer some of your questions. So as a journalist, I am a news anchor on television. So you may have seen me or other people that work for WRAL if your mom or dad watches the news or if the news has been on TV at your house. Um, you may have seen us talking about things like hurricanes or the pandemic or coronavirus or things like that. Um, we share a lot of news that's, you know, not great. A lot of people say, oh, the news is very negative because there are a lot of bad stories. So we share a lot of, you know, stories that aren't that great. Um, but we also try to share stories that are really good. So we try to find stories in our community where people are doing really good and extraordinary things. And we try to tell those people's stories. And um, so the mix hopefully gives people a representation of what their community is like, the good and the bad, um, because that's the truth. Every community has good in it and has bad in it. And it's our job as journalists and um, community helpers to reflect what's happening in our community so that people who are watching can say, okay, this is not great. What can we do to make our community a better place? Or they can see something that's really good on TV and they can say, wow, our community is awesome. So that's one of the things um, that we do. We go on television every night. I anchor, it's called an anchor when you're um, in the studio. So you'll see if, you, if you've ever watched the news, your um, people are behind desks or in the studio and then there are other people who are outside, outside shopping malls or people's houses or something like that. They're called reporters and the people who are inside are called anchors. So my job is an anchor. So I usually um, write a lot of the stories and then I'll then send it out. I'll pitch it out to a reporter to talk a little bit more about the story. So I'll say something like, um, there was a fire at a dorm at... NC State University. Our John Smith is there to tell us a little bit more about what happened. And then reporter John Smith would give details about what happened. Um, so I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of reading. It's really important in my job to know a lot about what's going on in our community. So I read um, the News and Observer, which is the newspaper here. I read a lot of local magazines. I talk to a lot of people to find out what's going on in our community. Um, and it's really important that we know what's going on in the country and in the world so that we can um, know what we're talking about when we then tell those stories to, the, to our audience, people who are watching TV. So that's one of the really big parts of my job is just reading a lot and learning a lot of information so that I can then turn it, you know, um, get the information, write it, kind of condense it, which means makes it make it um, shorter and easier to tell on TV and then um, let everyone on TV see it. So we have a limited amount of time on television. We only have about a minute, yeah, that's right, Max. Max knows a minute and 30 seconds to tell most of our stories. So a minute and 30 seconds really isn't that long. So one big part of our job is to um, find the most important information and put that in and leave out the information that's maybe not as important. It still can be important, but it's maybe not as important. So we have to really go through the information that we get and we get a lot of it and find, okay, is this the most important bit of information? Because we only have a minute and 30 seconds. So is, if this is the most important bit of information, 
then let's go with that. And I'm going to give you an example. Let's say that I am telling a story. Um, Johnny went to the store. Johnny's car was blue. Johnny bought some chips for his friend, Jimmy. Johnny and Jimmy ate the chips together. They had a great day. What would be, is there anything about that story that maybe I could leave out that's not like super important? What do you think, Max? The last three sentences. No, not the last three sentences. Johnny went to the store. Johnny's car was blue. Johnny bought chips for his friend Jimmy. Johnny and Jimmy ate the chips together. All that's important except, do we really need to know his car was blue? It's good to know his car was blue, right? But we don't need to know that to understand the rest of the story. So that's a big part of our job is looking at a lot of information that comes into our newsroom, figuring out what's the most important information to make the story complete, and then giving that to our audience. And then our audience, of course, has the option to go out and do their own research and figure out the rest of the story. So our audience could say, huh, that's a great story. I wonder what color car Johnny was driving. And they could then do their own research and find out that Johnny was driving a blue car. But for our purposes, we try to get the most critical information in and put it on TV so that people know what's happening and they can get it really um, pretty quickly. So I want to give you guys a little tour. Things are all really different right now because normally I would be in our studio, which is in Raleigh by NC State. But because of coronavirus, I have been working out of my home since March. So I want to give you guys a tour of what it looks like. And it's really messy. And I apologize for that. But I kept thinking it was only going to be like a couple weeks and then it turned into a couple months. And now it's like going on six months. So it is what it is. It's functional. It works. And um, I hope that you will enjoy this little tour. Max, if you could um, come over here for me. You got to show them your Clorox wipes. Uh, yes, I do have Clorox wipes right here, but those are for a very important reason. And I'll tell you about those in just a minute. And they have nothing to do with cleaning. So this is, you know what, Max, why don't you just show the room? This is my guest room. And uh, it was really a pretty nice guest room before all of this. But in March, one of our engineers, one of our technical people at our station brought all of this equipment over so that I can now go live from my house. And we do that using a computer and using some technology called Live View, which I will show you in just a minute, but I don't wanna to get too far into the weeds here. Um, but so basically what I do is instead of being at the studio where I'll show you in just a minute, I sit here at my desk, we have this background up. So it says WRAL News on it. I've tacked it up to my wall. I have a little chair here. We have lights, we have this light, and then this light over here, and then a light in front of the camera. And that um, helps me get the proper light. Now that, that's interesting. Look, I, turn, I, I keep my light off in the room because if I turn the light on, it's too much light on me. Or the fan. Or the fan, yeah. They always get mad at me when I turn the fan on because it makes noise. Um, so I, when I get to work every day, which is in my guest room, I shut the door, right, Max? Max knows not to knock on the door, right? But you do it anyway sometimes. <laughs> but I come in here, I shut the door, and I open up um, a computer program that looks like this. And you can see it's, we'll do it in real time. So this is, let's see, let's go in here. This is um, all, of the stories that we're going to air during our news tonight. And each one has a number and a letter. Um, so G4 and the, um, we call it the slug, but what it is is basically it's the main idea. IRS sending checks after error, okay? That's the main idea of this story. So we just put the main idea there so that we know to open it up and then this is where we write our story. So the IRS is sending out economic impact checks to roughly 50,000 Americans. See, sometimes it's this time happens. For dinner. Okay. I'm with Max right now. Say hello to Miss Bierke's class. Who's Miss Bierke? You know Miss Bierke. Oh, okay. I'm going to be down in just a few minutes. Max. Max. Uh, he'll come down. He's come helping on. me. Hey, will you shut the door, please? Okay. Sometimes Are that you happens. Can you send me a note? Yes. And 
that's an example of the parts that you could cut out of an important thing. <laughs> um, all right, so back to our main idea, right? I know you guys know what a main idea is. So each story has a number and a letter so that we know what story it is. We give it a main idea, so we give it a title, and then we write the story over here. That's what the story is all about. The IRS is sending out checks, economic impact checks, to 50,000 Americans. Okay, that's good. And then when all is said and done, what's written here on the screen comes up right there in what's called the teleprompter. So right now, let me move this out of the way. Right now, Mike Mays, this is live. Mike Mays, our meteorologist, is doing the weather. And when he wraps that up, he is going to send it back. Oops, sorry. He is going to send it back to David Crabtree, who will then, and I'm going to show you right here. So this is where we are in our newscast. We're at the weather. And then weather, that's what WX stands for. Weather tosses to sports. That's what David will say. So if you open this up here, you can see it says David toss sports. That is what appears here, David toss sports. So that's how we know what to say, Max. You can resume your duties there. Um, so that's what comes up on the teleprompter. And we read that sometimes, sometimes we, what's called ad lib, which means we don't, we say things that we haven't pre-written. We just have to talk about stories on the fly. Um, so I'm trying to look up for some um, questions. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the, in a nutshell, what I do as a community helper. That's, that's my job here. Um, oh, I did want to talk a little about specifically um, some of the things that we do to help keep people safe. So when there's a hurricane or a tornado or say really bad weather, that's when a lot of people really pay attention to the news. That's one time when our what's on the news is really important. So we are able to tell people, okay, the tornado is coming. It's here and it's going to be in this town next and it's going to be in this town next. And if you live in this town, you need to get to shelter. Or we can say, oh, there's a hurricane coming and it's going to impact these specific places. So if you live in one of these specific places, you want to get to shelter or get to, um, you know, get to some protection and protect your home. So that's one of the ways that we are able to help our community and make sure that people can stay safe when um, really dangerous situations come up. Another way, and I'll just use the um, example of the coronavirus pandemic, which is, um, you know, we've obviously talked a lot about that, but um, people are, especially in the beginning, you know, didn't know anything about it and people were not sure what was going on. And so this, the governor of North Carolina, who's kind of the guy in charge of North Carolina, he was holding what he calls press briefings every day. And so we, as the media, were able to go to those press briefings, honey, you're fingers mm -hmm. that. we're able to go to those press briefings get all the information and then give it out to everybody so that everybody could know because you know people have jobs and kids and families and sports and they're busy and they can't necessarily sit down and pay attention to everything the governor says at 2 30 on a tuesday right but we can that's our job so when important things happen we make sure to be there so that we can then give the information to everybody else out in the community so that they also have the information. And we just try to do it, just here's the information so that people know what's going on so they can then make informed choices about their own life. Um, so I wanna get to some questions from some awesome second graders at Holly Grove Elementary School. This is a question from Jonah. Do you travel to do news? Thanks for the question, Jonah. Yes, I do. I travel back up just a little bit. It feels like you're really close to me. <laughs> um, Jonah, yes, I do travel. For um, a few years when I lived in New York, I traveled a lot um, and would go all over the country um, for various stories. Now I work in what's called local news. 
So I mostly travel around the state of North Carolina, but when important things happen in Washington, DC, which is where the president and Congress are, I'll go there. Um, I recently went down to South Carolina because there was a hurricane that was coming there. And so I wanted, I, I was there when the hurricane hit just to let people know what was going on. Um, I traveled to South Korea to cover the Olympics. So I was there for a month a couple of years ago. Actually, Max, weren't you in Miss Bjerke's class at that point? Mm -hmm. I think you were. No, I wasn't. No, Miss Thornton's class? Mm -hmm. um, wow, it's been a long time. Um, so yes, I travel a lot and it's really interesting because you get to see a lot of things firsthand that you wouldn't normally necessarily get to see in any other job. Isabel asks, is it fun being on TV? Sometimes, <laughs> I'll be very honest. I mean, sometimes it's fun. You know, it's kind of a cool job um, that, you know, it's not a lot of people have. So people are interested in it. It's kind of fun. Um, you get to make a lot of decisions very quickly. You have to make a lot of decisions very quickly. There's a lot of people watching everything you're doing. And so you kind of get your adrenaline going. Do you guys know what adrenaline is? It's where you feel all like butterflies and um, you feel all excited. It kind of um, gets your adrenaline going because everything's happening really fast and it's all live. And um, so that's the fun part of it. The not so fun part is when I mess up on TV because it's live and there's nothing you can do. And there's sometimes I've messed up like I've tried to say a word and I couldn't say it and I've just had to go like blah, blah. And then I feel like I look kind of dumb, but you know, it happens to everybody. So it's fun being on TV. It's interesting. It's an interesting job. So um, I enjoy it. Zion asks, are you ever scared to be on television? Great question, Zion. Um, I used to be when I first started. I was really, really shy when I was growing up. So, um, which may be hard for you to believe since I do what I do, but um, I was really shy and scared to talk to strangers, but I knew I wanted to do this job. So, um, I was really scared to be on TV the first few years that I did it, but then I realized it's actually no big deal. You know, you just kind of roll with the punches and you know, whatever happens, happens, you deal with it and it's live television. And if you make a mistake, you just keep going. And if you mess up, you just keep going. And if you're doing great, you just keep going and the best thing is you get to do it all again tomorrow. So nothing sticks around too long. All right. Um, I, um, I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce this. Ian, maybe? Ian? Ian? Asks, how do you know the news to tell people? And that is a great question too. So we get our news that comes into our newsroom from a lot of different places. We get um, people send us press releases. So that's like information. They'll say like... Um, a company will say, hey, we're having a fair on Saturday. Can you guys come cover it? So we're like, yeah, that'd be great. We'll come cover your fair. So people send us information. And then sometimes we just get information because someone calls our newsroom and says, um, hey, there's something happening at Walmart or there are fire trucks at an address and, you know, we don't know what's happening or Sometimes people call our newsroom and then um, we also have little boxes in our newsroom called scanners where when police talk to each other and firefighters and um, emergency workers talk to each other, they do it on what's called a scanner. And so we can also hear that. And so if we hear police and fire and then talking to each other saying, oh, we're responding to um, you know Jones Street for a fire, then we will say, oh, there's a fire on Jones Street. So we'll then go to check it out. Wyatt asks, how many years have you worked as a news anchor? And the answer is about 20. Actually, I'm just about to hit 20 years. Max's <sighs> mouth just dropped open. I know because he can't believe I'm that old. I must be much younger than that, right? Older. Um, I have been working as a news anchor for 20 years. And I worked first at a TV station in Danville, Virginia. If anybody knows where that is, it's just over the Virginia line. And then I worked at a TV station in Baltimore, Maryland, and then at a TV station in New York City, which is where Max was born. 
And then we moved here to Raleigh and we have been here a little more than six years. So, um, Cece asks, what do you like about being a news anchor? Um, I think the thing I like most about being a news anchor is that I get to learn every day brand new things. So whether it's about people or it's about things that are happening in the world or it's about silly things or animals or anything like that, I get to learn new things every day. And I just think that is fascinating. I think that's the coolest thing in the world. And then I really like being able to tell other people's stories. I really, really like to write. It makes me feel good and happy. And um, so when I get to write about something that's happening and tell people about something that's happening that's really important, then um, I feel really, really good about that. And I love doing that. Mackenzie, how long do you do the news each day? So Mackenzie, I work in my studio from two in the afternoon until about 11 or 11.30 at night. I go out for a dinner break, I come back in, but um, I am only on television from four to five in the afternoon, from 5.30 to six in the evening, and from 10 to 11 in the evening. So all that other time, what? <laughs> All that other time, I'm writing and researching and doing other things. So there's a lot about TV that doesn't have to do with actually being on TV, but that's the time that I'm actually on and doing the news. And then Danny asks, how many news reports have you done? Um, too many to count, Danny. <laughs> too many to count. I do, I guess, about, let's see, if I had to guess, I would say 70, 80. 160, probably four to 500 a day and times 20 years. So an awful lot, but, um, but I love the most, the ones that I get to spend a lot of time on and that um, are really good, positive stories about our community. And I love talking to people in our community and especially to kids to um, share what I do, why I do it, and to help our community. So I hope this helps you understand what I do as a community helper and what I do as a journalist. I hope you enjoyed learning and enjoyed the tour of my home studio here. Did they get to see the camera over there? And um, I hope that you guys are having a really good virtual learning experience and you're being good to your parents and good students for Miss Bierke and you're having fun and um, approaching everything with an open mind because this year is going to be awesome. That's what I keep telling you, right, Max? Over right. 12 million things. Over 12 million what? Uh, reports. Oh, 12 million reports, Max says. All right. Um, so anyway, have a great day. Thanks for letting me talk to your class. Miss Fierke, love you, miss you. Hope to see you soon. Stay safe, everybody. Bye.